What's up, what's up, internet? It's hella real. What's up? Back on Zoom, still in quarantine, shelter in place. How you holding up, cat? Um, it is what it is. <laughs> I think I've gotten used to it. Yeah. Now, um, it still sucks though. I miss like going to happy hour and I miss hanging out with friends, going out to eat. Yes, I've been cooking my ass off. Girl, me too. <laughs> what, what's, what are your, some of your quarantine dishes? What have you been making? Uh, well, now I have shifted to just eating healthier stuff because at first I have stocked up on hella processed junk. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just doing like stir fries. Stir fries are so easy. <laughs> yeah, that's basically just like take whatever you have and add rice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like you could do tofu, you could do shrimp, and then I just try to have fun with um, the sauces. Uh, I'd be throwing like some sesame oil and some uh, sriracha mm -hmm. and ginger. Just like put it all like in a processor and just and then put it all over your uh, stir fry stir fry noodles. How about you? I've been grilling out a lot, so as you know, my mm, back oh, that's right. is, you know, it's always sunny here. So mm. I'm like perfecting how to actually like heat the coals properly and all that. Throw some steaks on there, some hot dogs and sausages for the kids, you know, try mm -hmm. to chicken. That's the one thing I don't, I don't like grilling. I love it. I always leave it for someone else to do. <laughs> I like it, and then, you know, I got a pool so the kids will be out swimming and I'm grilling. It feels like so summer, you know? Mm-hmm. Just trying to keep Oh, yeah, you guys got the, yeah, you guys got the pool, so it makes sense. Yeah, it's nice, nice. Cook outside. I got the secret recipe for wings from my dad. Sorry, I can't share with y'all. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, no, so I've been cooking, and then also I'm here for all these restaurants starting to have, like, family meals like uh, I don't know some of these restaurants here like you know, instead of having to order seven different dishes you could actually order like a family meal or come in a little like catering but then more small scale so like yeah. Hawaiian barbecue does it BJ's places like that so mm -hmm. that's the reason yeah. why I think we have we're having the guests we're having today he's doing something like that yes 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 that's what he's that's what he's doing yes so he should be joining us any minute now oh there he is <laughs> hey <laughs> coming to the floor everybody welcome our guest robert dorsey welcome to the show well via zoom anyways <laughs> for having me happy to be here yes yes i'm glad you came so you are a, a Bay Area, I'm gonna call you a Bay Area legend now. <laughs> that, that's fitting. Yes. So, you've been working at um, some of the best restaurants here, in, or there in the Bay Area. Why don't you give us a little background on yourself so our guests can, I mean, so our viewers can get to know you. Okay, great. So I, I started in the Bay Area back in, gosh, the mid 80s just as a kid in high school and I kind of worked my way around the Berkeley culinary scene, um, starting to replace the Metropole, a little French, French bistro, did an apprenticeship there for three and a half years, kind of got my wings, if you will. So just out of high school, I was like, I'd become a chef um, after working with a Frenchman and studying, um, mastering the art of French cooking with Julia Child. Okay. Uh, with culinary Bible. I remember the her TV show. Yeah, yeah, that was. I had friends who were riding bikes and um, you know, playing in the street, and I was like in my grandmother's kitchen and uh, trying to see what I could whip up. So you've been in the game for a, a while now, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm in it. And from there, I hop, actually hopped into the city in the early '90s and start working my way around the city. Worked at Coletto Union Square. Cafe Pescatori over on the wharf, and um, gosh, Firefly Noe Valley, which was a big, big deal for me. One of mm. my first gigs as a, you know, leading a kitchen as a chef de cuisine. Nice. So I'm proud of that. 
for all y'all letting me know if you're met. Are they still around or no? Fireflies are still around. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so we heard that you uh, have done a lot of work in the community in the past. Uh, can you tell us some of those examples? Yeah, you know, over the years I've worked uh, throughout with the 100 Black Men of the Bay Area in mentoring, kind of health and wellness, some of the initiatives that we, you know, um, are behind here in the Bay Area. But also back in 2012, around that 2012-13, I founded the Junior Chef Society, which uh, was my vision uh, to help engage inner city youth into the culinary arts industry kind of saw what was happening in Oakland, Uptown, and you know, all the money, all the folks moving from around the world to open places in Oakland. I was like, you know, we've got kids who are right here in West Oakland, Lake area. They grew up here, families grew up here, and they don't have access to these opportunities. Yeah. So we kind of had a garden to table um, program. And my idea behind that was not necessarily to usher all the kids into the industry, but to give them an outlet, you know, get away from the violence, uh, you know, some of the things that happen on the home front. Um, my way of giving back, you know, my way of kind of letting young people know that they can make it, they can live their dreams. Um, and with the idea that a lot of kids will go off to college or culinary school, we just want to be the conduit, you know. That's, right, yeah, just like open their mind to something they probably never thought of doing. Yeah, and who knows, it could lead to, you know, ownership. I, I was really promoting ownership, you know, bartending, just different aspects just to give them a variety of ways to enter the industry. So when you say garden to table, did you actually have a garden or? I actually had a garden. So for a few years, I lived in the gardens at Lake Merritt. Oh, wow, nice. So we had a plot and we grew, you know, tons of vegetables there. A lot of things that we didn't know you can grow in Oakland, like watermelon, <laughs> you know, uh, fava beans, tomatoes, you know, char, kale, just about everything. And then uh, you bring that to you know, whatever you guys were cooking that day or? You know, we, we actually did a couple of demos in the garden. We actually had, you know, really large community gatherings there where we do cooking demos with the youth there. And so that was fun. We all got, got really good turnout there. And, um, you know, it's just a way to engage the community and let them know, you know, what we were doing and uh, with the hopes that they'd get behind, you know, our initiatives. So now you have a catering business. Um, but of course, of course, because of COVID, I'm sure you're not doing a bunch of parties no, <laughs> lately. So how, how have you guys had to adapt to this new normal? We had to adapt quick. Yeah. <laughs> we did a quick pivot. So just, you know, with my years of experience, I said, you know, I, want, I still want to feed people. And so I just started thinking about recipes and things that and I like to eat at home and things that I want to share with people. So we started doing like a family style, um, family style meals to go. So what we're doing now is cold prepared foods that you can eat throughout the week and put in, starting to put those in um, like meal kits. So, for example, you could have, you know, a bolognese sauce, and we'd throw in some fresh pasta for you, roasted beet salad, curry noodles, all things that are packaged in a way that you can enjoy a little bit tonight, a little bit, you know, a few days later, and a bunch of soups and stews and things like that. Um, and also, we're offering um, farm stand produce uh, boxes, which I'm curating myself and just putting in, you know, some of the best of the best local variety of produce and fruits and things. So, you know, it's a hustle, you know, it reminds me of my early days of, uh, you know, the different kind of hustle. Different kind of hustle? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a street you know, pharmacist, I think. Here. So yeah. we, we're pulling all nighters now, but you know, we, we're, we got a different thing going into, into the boxes. Uh, We've got a whole new business going. And so when things open back up, we're definitely looking to service our catering clients, but to, um, you know, launch this other brand, which is, it's a little more family friendly, a little, it's a little brighter, if you will. You know, what I do in the catering space, I love, but it's more formalized and, you know, small bites. 
time. But we're looking to do something that's just kind of fun, you know? And I've been telling folks the last few weeks, and I haven't figured out how to coin it, but I'm like, I'm gonna make some delicious food, and I don't care when you eat it or how you eat it, but just enjoy it. So it's a bit of a smattering of different cultures and, and things from different cuisines that we just do, ex we, we try to execute really well. And um, yeah, yeah, that's that. So. so your ingredients, you get them at the farmer's market or it's like, what can we look forward to when we, if we get these meal kits? So, you know, we source, you know, try to do most of our sourcing locally with an emphasis on, you know, organic, wholesome, you know, we're making everything from scratch. It's not anything that we're buying. So we have chefs in the kitchen who are, you know, making stocks and sauces. Um, and look, for example, this week, I can tell you what's on the menu. We have um, a summer vegetable lasagna, which is a trio of three summer squash, uh, roast eggplant, roast cremini mushrooms, and that's all layered with uh, fresh pasta, a plum tomato sauce, fresh ricotta, mozzarella, and you just pop, you know, we give it to y'all layered. You pop it in the oven, 20 minutes or so. You got I'm having a fantasy right now in my head. Right, I'm like, <laughs> that's my mouth so don't is watering. Know <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's all good. You know, actually, funny thing is, people ask me over the years, like, what do you love to cook? And, you know, what's your favorite thing? And I could never really give them an answer. I was like, thinking in my head, I'm like, I love everything. But there's a dish that I have on the menu that I am totally in love with right now. And I've been in love with it for several years, but I've fallen deeper in love with it. And that's our Thai curry coconut noodles. They, oh, that sounds so bomb. <laughs> so it's the kind of thing that- It's volcanic. It's the kind of thing that I say, if someone else cooked this for me, I would be like, this is like the stuff, you know, I gotta have it. So, so you gotta try the curry noodles. It's it's uh, like Chinese egg noodles, toasted garlic, um, and we make this, uh, it's a vegetarian style coconut curry sauce that has Thai basil, garlic, ginger, soy, and, and a bunch of coconut milk. And um, we toss that together mm. with fresh Thai basil, scallions, and sliced portobello mushrooms. And it is, it's, it's jamming. It smells delicious. Yes. Right, like I'm just picturing <laughs> you. Know. You, got that, yes. you got that Thai basil coming through? Mm -hmm. Those garlic chips. So. And the coconut. Now, so do you have like instructions or like when I get the meal kit I have to figure it out or how do I know like what to do? Um, so I actually go to every client's home when they order and oh, wow. prepare the meals. Oh, like, so you got, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, no. We we have a PDF uh, instructions online. I also try and stick one in the bag. So nice. I think I get them in every uh, every other order or a week. I get them in the bag. Other times I'm racing to find labels and things, but they're always on our website. So what you're saying is you need some interns. Exactly. <laughs> send this, your kids, this, Taylor. This is my pitch. <laughs> this is my pitch. Okay. I can send you some of my kids. I got enough. You <laughs> read it. Uh, quickly, but can you tell us what day is pickup? That it is uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. We are just off of Lake Merritt, so easy, easy access, uh, pull up, curbside pickup. The curbside pop up is what we first hopped out with uh, when we when we launched this. So now it's not a pop up; it's like a permanent. We're we're like a fixture there. You heard that? Pull up. Yes. Pull up. Pull up. With your right. mask. With the math. <laughs> okay, I think we that's about it for questions unless there is. We also have like a lightning round of questions if you want to do that with us. Uh, of course. I'm game. All right, all right. Let me pull them up. So uh, uh, let me see how stuck I'm going to be here. Let me see. You ready? Here we go. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Pecan or pecan? Pecan. Do you cut sandwiches straight or diagonal? Both. Do you dip your fries or cover with ketchup? Dip. Because you're not a psychopath. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fold the pizza slice or keep it straight? Fold, fold. Okay. Pineapple on pizza or no? 100%. Yes. yes. <laughs> 
Yes! <laughs> You're normal. Right. Drums or flats? Flats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so far, he's not a psychopath. That's what we're learning. Okay. Right now. Huh? I need some wings like right now. Some right. Flats. Same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ketchup stored in the pantry or in the fridge? Fridge. Okay. Sugar or salt on grits? Both. Okay. I said that slow. Both. <laughs> oh, what temperature is perfect for steak? 130 degrees. And that's oh, medium, degrees. what, rare? It's rare. rare. Okay. Oh, that's just rare. Oh, that's it's bloody. <laughs> yeah, that's mooing. Centerpiece or centerpiece on brownies? A centerpiece. Huh. For sure. Soft or crunchy tacos? Soft. Corn on the cob or off the cob? On the cob. Ice cream in a cup or in a cone? Cone. Oh. Sugar in your spaghetti sauce or no? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You don't, you don't put sugar in your spaghetti sauce? Um, no. <laughs> He's just like, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's Filip she's half Filipino, so there's there's is like yeah, I, 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 know, I know I know where you're I know where you're coming <laughs> from, and and actually at some point I think like a tomato soup or a sauce there has been sugar there, but okay, yeah. He's like not not spaghetti, spaghetti sauce. Like spaghetti sauce no. Ah, we gotta try this sugarless spaghetti one day, Kayla. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, last but not least, um, we always have to ask, we are hella real, and you are hella... Um, the first thing comes to mind, hella hood. Okay. Oh. Like he really from <laughs> up. <Elfendo. laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm hella passionate. I'm passionate. passionate I think that about, comes through, uh, even through people, video. Passionate about the community. Passion about food and just uh, the environment. I just, I, I love deep and just uh, enjoy, you know, enjoy all of those things. No, we definitely need to get some of them kits and bring it down. I'm gonna yeah. go. And for everyone else watching who are interested in uh, purchasing a meal kit, uh, where can they, where can they find that? They can find that at www.chefrobertdorsey. <laughs> dot com and we're also on facebook and instagram at chef robert dorsey catering on uh instagram or, i'm sorry it's uh at robert dorsey catering on instagram and our facebook page is robert dorsey catering and events all right all right well definitely all of our viewers go and check them out especially if you're in oakland um, go and get some of those kids and thank you for doing that for the for the community because I know having a big family that like those meal kits and those like family style meals that a lot of restaurants have started to do or people like this that you're doing it's really really helpful especially because it's like it's hard to like come up with something to cook every night of the week or like but, it, but it's still the way you're doing it it's still fresh and feels like not just like takeout. It's like something right. that's still. That's, that's one of the things that we just really like folks to know is that it's not a plate of food. Um, it's not a meal just for the night, but it's it's a meal kit in the sense that you you can get some produce, um, and you most of our um, actually all of our dishes serve three to four uh, people, if not more. So, kind of keeping in mind, you know, lunch for the lunch for the day, or you know, spreading it out for dinner. All right, Robert, well, thank you so much. Cannot wait to try your food. Yes. We're looking forward to seeing you. Yes. All right. Well, thanks to Chef Robert Dorsey. Y'all go check him out, especially those of our followers that are, that are in Oakland. I know, I will. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an Oakland native, you know, Black-owned business, so go on and support. Speaking of Black stuff, Netflix is about to have all the old black shows. Yes. So what are you watching first? Let me see. I think you sent, let me see. Well, let, let, let me go down the list. Yeah, so, go down the list, go down the list. It's 
Moesha, The Game, Sister, Sister, Girlfriends, The Parkers, Half and Half, and One on One. So, oh, I think <laughs> I will probably do The Game first because, um, full you disclosure, never watched I never watched it. I've probably seen like a handful of episodes. <laughs> Yeah. And, but I've never watched it, so I, I'm going to go there. I love that show so much. I can't watch it again because it took me on an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm about to be on it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be texting you like, girl. No <laughs> it's going to be like the new 90 Day Fiance. You should definitely see it. And um, then, what about you? What are you going to rewatch? Um, I'm going to watch Girlfriends, kind of the same reason. <laughs> You're gonna watch the game. I I never watch it consistently. I never watch it consistently when it was on, so now I wanna like follow. But I heard like it didn't have like a real ending. So you're gonna be disappointed like, in a couple weeks later? Yeah, I, I, I know I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> but I heard I heard Tracy Ellis saying they're working on something like that or they, they would like to wrap up the show. Like a have Sex a in the City style, like do a movie or something? She didn't say, but some, some, something just to not leave us hanging. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's another one too, because I was kind of too young for that when it came out. Like, I think it wasn't I think really so too. my. I think it was too grown for me, maybe. Right, right. So, could it really relate? Yeah, now I'm in my 30s, so I might, might like, enjoy more. it more. <laughs> yeah. And then the Parkers is always on TV, so I feel like I've seen every episode of that. <laughs> half and half, I religiously watch that. I don't remember half and half. What's half and half? Oh wait, no, I'm tripping. One on one. Which one is the one with Flex and and? A one on one. Okay, so that I, I watch. Love one on one. That I watch religiously. Mm-hmm. Half me and too. half. Let me see. And sister, sister is something just like um, Fresh Prince and Golden Girls. Is that that's something I would just put on all the time, even if I'm not watching it. Because I'm so familiar with the episodes, I'm, I just it's just like comforting. Oh, this is the one they were in San Francisco, I think. Remember? I don't. I remember. I've seen. I remember, I remember the, the show. show. I, I'm pretty sure like they worked at well, like I'm gonna check it out. office in San Francisco, and like uh, yeah, I've seen like a few episodes of that one. And then, well, yeah, I'm like you said, it, Sister so. Sister would be like, I, yeah, I also watched that one religiously. So yeah, it would be like Which another one? Sister Sister. Yeah, so, that's what they put on all the time. I would probably like to go watch them back to early episodes because, you know, you kind of forget. And then that's when it's always the most, like, wholesome. And then I kind of like the college episodes. Mm, I remember the college episodes. When they had straight hair and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> So shout out to Netflix, putting some black shit. They're, they're trying to be black AF. <laughs> uh, they're doing all the things they said they're gonna do, right? <laughs> so Kayla, uh, are your kids going back to school? No, they're not. <laughs> it's all gonna be, it's, it's gonna be virtual. virtual, yeah. I think I saw a meme that was like, like sending back to kids, but sending kids back to school and it's like parents. And then it was like, using zoom like it's the same reaction like <laughs> it's like oh we're fucked either way yeah but you know i don't i don't want them to go especially having the newborn in the house i don't want them out with people who i don't know what their families it's, are it's doing. begun some places have already started school and kids are testing positive yeah it's not what do you think was gonna happen <laughs> again i people send their kids to school when they're sick regular and they're not supposed yeah. to, you know. And so you're telling, and I've, I've heard teachers say too that kids, parents will drop their kids off at school with knowing they're sick, then turn off their phones so that they can't get a hold of them. I'm sorry, not everybody can be parents. What the fuck? Yes, that's <laughs> it. I've heard people, I've, oh, some no. of my friends that are teachers talk, tell me that parents do turn this. Off the phone. Is it because they so they could buy enough work? time to like yeah, so they could buy, at least buy a few hours at work, and then you know get wow. maybe get off early or something. I mean the struggle can be real but damn like you can't be sending your kids to school. This is so selfish. Sick. Yeah. Um 
I mean, yeah, even so, if you so kids work hours according to y'all president, <laughs> kids can go to school. Um, but they can't go on TikTok. <laughs> they can't go where? On TikTok. Oh yeah. Oh my god. So dumb. His priorities are so fucked up. So he wants to ban TikTok. Why? Is it because of them K-pop kids, what they did with the rally? Is Probably. It of, is it that? Probably. <laughs> He's trying to say it's like some security bullshit. I don't Because they're Chinese company. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure it has to do with how Gen Z is just kicking his ass. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like Kellyanne Conway's daughter. Oh my gosh. She is the ultimate troll. I love her. She just, I literally <laughs> just saw something that she said the other day. She said she wants AOC to to adopt her. <laughs> yeah. So, but but it's not safe enough to have an election. Did you hear that? He wants to push it back. But it's safe for the kids to go to school. Like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> I'm tired of him. He should be tired. Right? Like, aren't you tired president? of being shitty at being president? <laughs> like, aren't you done with the him? Aren't you as done as we are with this? Like, for real. And then you go to yeah. say, then how he said, what do you say? Like absentee voting, not the same as mail in voting. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> That's the same yes, thing. Yes, the fuck it is. We've been doing it here for years. I've been, I've been voting by a mail. A bunch of states. For the a past, bunch of states have been doing it for years. I've been doing it for the past four years. I've been voting by yeah. mail. It should be a holiday. You know, it used to be a holiday, election day. It used to be a holiday. It was so a federal holiday, yeah. So people can take it off work and not, or not have to go to work. Yeah. And, uh, but they obviously don't want us to vote, so they stop doing that. Oh, uh, Sarah, all that to say, don't get discouraged, folks. Go Please vote. <laughs> we need to come in hard this time. <laughs> yeah, because we got to get this nigga out. That, every time someone says, says their votes won't count, and this, like, recently, I, I use John Lewis's name. I'm <laughs> like, you better not. Right. You better go vote. Right. He he died for you. Well, he didn't die for you, but. Well, yeah, well. Yes. He, he fought recently for you. died. That, that's the very least you can do is vote. And I, you know what? I, it's hard. I mean, I can kind of understand what people say. I mean, I always vote. I'll start by saying that. But, um,. When stuff like that, ha like when you hear about votes getting thrown out, or like I don't know if you're about in Nevada, like a whole um, storage facility of votes mm -hmm. was found, like after the fact, and like you keep hearing stories like that, where and then you feel like, yeah, is my vote actually literally even counting? So it can be discouraging, but at the same time, it's like they'll if do it. <laughs> that yeah, but at the same time, it's like if they're fighting this hard for me to not vote, then I damn well better vote. You know, like if I'm, mm -hmm. they're trying to suppress my voice so much, then it must be important. You know, yeah. so that's that's a balance where it's like it's kind of I can understand the frustration, but I'm always gonna What's vote. What's the alternative? Right. Just, Especially as just, a black woman, like as far hard as people like fought for me to be able for black people to be able to vote, and then all the suffragettes and women who work so hard in order for a woman to have a vote. So as a black woman, I'm like, I'm voting every time I get You better vote. Yeah. So. Still do it anyway. So that was my civic duty. Yes. It's the easiest thing you can do. Moving along, speaking about speaking of black women. <laughs> Beyonce. Let's, let's talk about Beyonce. Black is King music video? <laughs> visual album. Oh sorry, visual album. <laughs> yes. Did you get to, did you get to see it? I did. I watched it. Um it was like it was definitely not something you should take your eyes off of. Like yeah, because I started yeah. to like, look at my phone and do it and then I'm like, I'm missing too much. Like it's visually stunning, I would say. Yes. We knew that was gonna happen. It's Beyonce. <laughs> did you watch it? I did. I had to watch it in parts just because I seemed like uh, as soon as like my phone goes off, I don't want to miss anything. But I did. I did watch it in all. So it's been getting mixed reviews. I feel like like some people are like going at it, and then some people are like 
Oh, yes, okay. and then, of course, then you have the hive that's just like, bow down to the queen. Can we call her African mother <laughs> or something like that? <laughs> oh, I, I, wrote, I wrote this in our notes. I put Beyonce as king. Beyonce. Yeah, that's, a, that's something that someone tweeted. <laughs> Uh, someone said, should we, is it, is it fair to call her the new Mama Africa? Oh, that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's no. Like, no, and I don't think she wants that either. <laughs> no. And like you said, it's a retelling of The Lion King. It's not like, yeah. oh, I just know everything about Africa now. <laughs> right, 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 right. But, um, you know, if, but Africans are, they are entitled to that to their opinion and I get it they you know she's an African-American right and it, it comes up it comes off as if she's just making profit but but is it is it cultural appropriation isn't that when you like use the likeness of someone else's culture and not give credit I believe that's the definition. I, yeah, to me, like cultural appropriation is when you like you dress up as an Indian for Halloween or like I don't know. Like I, I'm even on the fence about like white people wearing box braids. Like I, some people get hell of, up their ass about that, and I'm just like, okay, to them it's a fashion, to us it's protective wear. But like you know, we got bigger problems. I'm the same. <laughs> when people be talking about hair, yeah, it's just like okay. My biggest thing that I probably agreed with with what Africans were problems with it um, was that you can't watch it in Africa. <laughs> there is no Disney Plus in Africa. No, there's like like a few countries that have a channel or something that you can watch it on. But yeah, it's not all over Africa. So I, I don't know what Beyonce could have done about that, but you know. But then everyone was dragging no name for her. She was she tried to say like. Oh, you can't be appropriating Africans, and then all the Africans was like, "Bitch, it was you? <laughs> like, you didn't have to do either." <laughs> oh, you did. Like, don't trick your, don't fix your fingers to tweet for us, and like, they went in on her. Oh God! So I she got that. it from the hive and the Africans. Oh God, poor thing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just need to not say nothing for class. Yeah, just don't say anything. It's someone like that though, a, a superstar, a black woman at that. She's gonna get it. She's she's gonna get backlash. But do you think they have more of a right to be critical of it than American, like yes. African Americans? Yes. Right? Yeah. Like I feel like that's kinda of my bigger uh, thing was I feel like if they say something, I don't really have a right to say how well okay well. Yeah, you I think can't tell them cool. how they're supposed to Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So maybe that's how they were. But then I also It's weird. When people have criticisms of Beyonce, I also take it with a grain of salt too because because of the beehive and because people go so hard for her that sometimes people just automatically go to hating on her because her fans can be hell of annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People, yeah. people don't like her fanship so they just might hate it anyway. Yes. They just hate her just, yeah. Because of the, like, the beehive is annoying as shit sometimes. But I love y'all, okay? Don't <laughs> don't you start- We are the beehive. Don't come from and be <laughs> <on us. laughs> Be more mature beehive, okay? There's levels to be high this. <laughs> yeah. Right, there's levels. You're right, exactly. <laughs> well, what did you think of it, Kat? I loved it. It was beautiful. Um, Brown Skin Girl was my favorite video. Mine too. I'm so so Actually, cool. that one and the other one with Jay-Z. Which one? The, oh, Mood Forever. Mood Forever, yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I liked yeah. that one. I love the brushing of the of the the grill. Oh yeah, that's in Move Forever, right? Yeah, it was Move Forever. Yeah, that was a favorite part. But yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I think we can wrap it up. I'm uh, send another thank you to Robert for coming through. Um, yes, yes. Thank you, Robert. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Yes. We'll catch you next time. Yes, look out for new episodes and uh, like. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Vote. Subscribe. Vote. Vote black. All of that. And justice for Breonna Taylor. Fucking right. And always keep it hella real. Bye. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't take my bra off.